Hello and good evening to everyone. I hope everybody is having a great time. I'm speaking to you from my home in Tampa, Florida. Believe me, I wish I were there in person. I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time. Unfortunately, I'm battling prostate cancer and I'm having adverse effects from my treatments. Before I begin my talk, let me first thank Rene LaRue and the New York State Hall of Fame Association for this very prestigious award. Last year, my good friends and teammates, Bobby Mercer and Thurman Munson, were inducted, and now I'm following in their footsteps. I'm very honored and very proud, but in a humble way. You know, I spent 40 years in the big leagues, and I have many wonderful memories from each and every year. But I must confess, the years I spent in New York with the Yankees were the most special. Getting the chance to wear the pinstripes, what a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Playing in Yankee Stadium with all those pennants and everything, what a thrill. Having Winning world championships in New York City, well, it doesn't get any better than that in professional baseball. I have so many people to thank. Let me start with you, the fans. Yankee fans are the best in all of baseball. To you, I say thank you for your love and your support. I am certain you made me become a much better ball player, so I want to thank you for that. My teammates, we had so much fun together. What a great group of competitors, winners. I love all of you fellas. My managers, especially Billy Martin and Bob Lemon, thank you for believing in us and keeping us focused. My coaches, Yogi Berra, Elston Howard, Dick Hauser, just to name a few. All of, thank you for all your hard work to make us better. Mr. Steinbrenner, in my opinion, as good an owner as there was in baseball. Yes, he had his idiosyncrasies, but he was always supportive and believed in us. For me personally, he embarked me on my managing career. I thank him for that, and I will always forever be indebted to him. In the Bible, it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We players on these championship teams were focused on good baseball principles. We didn't let egos get in the way. We were a team of amazing teammates and friends that stimulated each other to be the best we could. Thurman Munson, our captain, exemplified that. He was a true leader and a professional in every sense of the way, and he was respected by everybody on the team. Our championship teams in 77 and 78 had really good starting pitching. Let's start with Ron Guidry. His name was Louisiana Lightning. He was 25-3 in 1978, Cy Young winner. What a great baseball, fastball and slider. Catfish Hunter, what a professional. Won 20 games numerous times, was a Hall of Famer, was the leader of our pitching staff, and was loved by all. Ed Figueroa, the first Puerto Rican born pitcher to win 20 games in the big leagues. What a competitor he was, he hated to lose. Don Gullett, we got him from Cincinnati. He was a heck of an athlete and he was a winner. Plus, he was my roommate and we would talk baseball late into the night, every night after the ball games. Those were our starting pitchers. Our bullpen, well, it wasn't too shabby. We had Sparky Lyle, Cy Young winner in 1977. Had a great slider and was a funny teammate. He kept us all loose. Dick Tidrell, his name was Mr. Dirt. He was extremely tough against right-hand hitters and wouldn't mind brushing you off the plate if he had to. The Goose, Goose Gossage, Hall of Famer. He had an incredible fastball and he was almost automatic in close situations. Loved to pitch in those type of games and he, he's a Hall of Famer also. We also had outstanding everyday players. At first base, Chris Chambers used to call him the snatcher, a really good defensive first baseman, but could hit for power and average. A good guy. 
At second base, we had Willie Randolph. Boy, could he turn a double play. A good contact hitter that gave us good speed on the bases. Greg Nettles, what a great third baseman. He had a tremendous glove. He was like a vacuum cleaner over there at third base. And what a sense of humor he had. Plus, he could hit you 30, 35 home runs a year. Bucky Dent, got him from the White Sox. He was rock steady at the shortstop position and a player that hit one of the biggest home runs in Yankee history. That three-run home run in Fenway Park in postseason will never be forgotten by Yankee fans or Red Sox fans. Our catcher and captain was Thurman Munson. Boy, could he call a great baseball game. The pitchers loved pitching to him. He was an excellent hitter and was tough as nails. Our outfielders, well, they were pretty good too. Let's start with Mickey Rivers, nicknamed Mick the Quick, was our leadoff hitter and, and, and center fielder. He made our offense go, had tremendous speed and could really play center field well. Roy White, Mr. Steady, uh, Mr. Consistency, a switch hitter that hit well from both sides of the plate, had good speed and was well liked by all his teammates. Reggie Jackson, Mr. October and a Hall of Famer, loved the limelight but could produce in those big key moment situations. Tremendous power. Oscar Gamble, a really funny guy who could hit for power and could come off the bench and with one swing of the bat win a ball game for you. Bobby Mercer, short, quick, compact swing. He loved to sit in his rocking chair before the game uh, to relax. A really good professional baseball player, a winner. Then, of course, me. Tino, congratulations on your inductions into the Hall of Fame. You were an excellent player. You were a winner. I'm proud to go into the Hall of Fame with you. Again, let me say thanks to everybody for being here. Enjoy your evening. What a wonderful journey. To Anita and my children, thanks for your love and support. I couldn't have done this without you. God bless all of you, and please stay safe.